Hi there, my name is Josh. This is a tutorial about automated rendering in Blender. I've set up a scene which you can download in the descriptions because what we're going to do is we are going to automatically render lots of images uh, based on configuration options of some piping. I've downloaded these pipes from a kit and um, I'll uh, set the link in the description but you have this project also so you can take this as a starting point this is a uh, base pipe and we want to render out all possible combinations of pipes which we have here in this project for instance we have a collection with tops which has this pipe top one top two and top three we also have pipes on the left left one left two left three obviously they're all connected and um, we have a faucet <coughs> which uh, has a wheel which can uh, have several colors and we have a gauge because gauges are cool now we want to render all possible combinations of these pipes and faucets and gauges and also we will have two camera positions and we want to render out the rear camera and the front camera so lots of images oh and we also have a logo plate because well you always want a logo and I've set up a directory with three images and uh, we will make Blender automatically read from that directory and put in uh, all the uh, possible logos. So we're in the scripting tab. Now let's create a script. Auto render. Now we cannot just tell Blender to render all the images because that would definitely crash Blender because it can only do one render at a time, right? So what we have to do is set up a timer, an interval. And at every interval, we look if we are still rendering. And uh, if so, we wait. And if the rendering has finished, then we render the next one out. Um, in the end, we will have file names that look like, um, we will set up directories so company one slash <clears throat> um, top will be top one and left will be left one and faucet will be none for instance and the gauge will be gauge and our camera will be the rear camera this would be the file name so in the file name you can see which configuration we have rendered first we'll set up a description and we'll import some uh, objects obviously the blender pi object is very important uh, but we'll also need the path from the OS module to be able to see if our file already exists because we're gonna render a lot of images sometimes maybe even more than a thousand images so we want to make sure that if blender crashes we can just start over and it'll skip the ones we already did because blender will crash you know it uh, now let's set up a class classes need an ID name and a label and now we're gonna set up some variables uh, because we are working with intervals or timer um, we need to have some booleans here that um, allow us to set a flag for if we want to cancel the rendering and also a flag if we are rendering we also need a render queue to put all our images in a waiting list if you will uh, the timer event will be held in this variable and we also want a total variable 
so we know how many images we are going to render and what is our progress. Next up are these variables, the logos path. Uh, the double slash means that Blender will now uh, start in our directory where the 3D project lives. So uh, this will be directory logos in our directory where we saved uh, this project. Output path will be uh, output directory for our images. We'll need these three definitions. Render init will be fired when the render starts. Render complete obviously when it is finished. And render cancel when we cancel the rendering. At this point, in these events, uh, we set these booleans and uh, it will be clear what, why we set these booleans here in a, in a minute. Next up, we need a definition to check if the file exists. We'll give it a file name and it will look in the output path if the file already exists and just returns a boolean. Then we need a definition to create a file name which will return a string. Now, um, this file name will be a combination of uh, strings to build the actual file name which I uh, showed you earlier. So the file name will consist of the name of the logo, then a separator, os.sep will generate a separator for your operating system. For instance, in Windows it will be a backslash, Linux in the Mac will be a forward slash and then it will have the word pipe and then we will add the top to the file name, the left, the faucet, the gauge and the camera. This Q item will make sense when we get further into the script and then we need an execute definition. This is the actual starting point. So we set these booleans. Uh, we will not cancel rendering at the beginning. We are not rendering at the beginning and the render queue is empty. Now we will go and build the render queue. And for that we need a couple of things. We need to know which combinations are possible. And therefore we have these variables. I put all the possible object names in a list, in an array if you will. And I also add none to that list. These are just strings, they're not objects, they're just strings representing the object's names. None, I will use that to check if we need to disable it. For left, we also have the possibilities for our left objects faucets, gauges, and interesting, the faucet colors. That is this red ring, this turn wheel for the faucet. I will have a, a red, a yellow, and a black version. And this is the way to represent colors in the blender, in, G in the RGBA format red, green, blue, alpha. And at last we need the collection of cameras. Now we could look up all cameras but I want to uh, have some control so I might have more cameras in the scene but these cameras, the front and the rear, I've put in a collection called cameras so that's where we're gonna look for cameras. Um, and then for all cameras in that collection, we add it to a list called cameras. Now the interesting part, let's build the render queue. First off, logo deer, the place where all the logos are. Let me pull up the file browser. This is the actual directory in which this 3D project lives. So the logo there will be the self.logos path which we defined up here, logos. So this directory, we have three beautiful logos in there. 
Okay, you can also see the output directory here, which is empty at the moment. We are going to look for logos. So for every file in there, in that logo dir, we're going to do something. This is the first step of the queue. If the file path we define here ends with JPEG or JPEG or PNG, this is a bit of security in here so that we are not trying to put movie files or whatever you stuff in there uh, onto our object as a texture, which will probably crash Blender. Then we create an object with a name and a path. The name will be the name of the file without the extension. The path will be the full path to this file. And then we loop through every possibility we want to be rendering. So for every camera that we have in cameras and then for every top we have and then for every left we have etc etc we create a case now there is also the faucet color but if we do not have a faucet we do not have a faucet color so let's do an if if faucet is none then what we do is we create this object and add it to our render queue we save all the variables in here so this will be actually an object containing one configuration which logo from which camera viewpoint with which top which left which gauge which faucet and nothing for faucet color because the faucet was none so with an if there is of course an else if we do have a faucet that is what this else means then we loop through every faucet color we know and then we add this object this configuration to the render queue so it's actually the same but now the faucet color is uh, the faucet color we put in here So, this will put every configuration we have into the render queue. And now we want to know how many images that is. So we set the total to the length of the render queue. And then we print the total to the console. Let's set up some handlers. The Blender Pi object has a lot of handlers and um, for this we need a render init render complete and render cancel handler so we first clear it just to be sure and what we do is we append the render init definition we made here we append it to the uh, handler event so we do the same for render complete and render cancel the next thing we'll do is we'll lock the interface this will prevent a lot of crashes and now will create the timer that uh, runs every half a second uh, and it will check if we have jobs to do. It will add a timer event to the window manager and um, you'll see in a minute what this does. We also need to tell that this will be running in the background and this is a state we have to return at the end to tell Blender that we're running a model now to make that model we um, define it and a model has a context and an event and one of the uh, most important things here is we want to be able to cancel this uh, this rendering because what if you have a thousand images you are rendering and they all take five minutes you have to be able to escape that so there's an event for that if you press the escape button the um, model will receive an event of type escape 
So we can hook into that. We'll print it out to the console and we will return a cancelled so that the render cancel will be fired. Next thing, if it's not an escape event, it might be a timer event because we are running this timer. So what we do now is we first look if there is actually something left in the render queue or it's if it's not the case or if we have said that we want to cancel the render. So if the render queue is empty or if we want to cancel, then we are going to do this. Remove our render callbacks. Just this is a cleanup operation. Then we remove the timer and we'll unlock the interface as well. And then we tell Blender we are finished and we print it to the console. Now there is an if, so there is an else. If we are uh, not cancelling our render and if there is something in the queue, we'll move on. And then we have this question. Are we rendering? If we are not rendering, then we're doing nothing. And there is a queue, so we should render. So what do we do? First, we set some variables. We'll set the uh, scene context in a variable for easy access and set a queue item variable. So this will be the first item in our rendering queue. When we finish this, we will remove it. And so the queue will get empty. We will use the make file name definition to make the actual file name. And we'll set the output path to the output path and the render file name. Now, very important, if this file exists, we don't want to render because this, this is unnecessary. If this output path, which we just created here, exists, then we pop the first item out of the render queue and we print to the console that we're skipping it. And we print the queue length. If not, then we will be rendering and we print out which number, which image we are rendering. We will finish this later. No, we'll finish this in a minute. We now return a pass through so that Blender can handle this. And now we need some more things because this script will not be running. It's just a class description. We need to register this class and run it. Therefore, we need a register function and an unregister function. This was the class name. Simple stuff. Now when this script is run by us, it will run in a context called main. Therefore we can do this and then call the register function which will register the render variations class and then it will run the actual class. It will run the operator called render.variations and that is the name of our class which is an operator. Now let's get back to our execution. If rendering is false then we are going to render. So this part will actually contain all the settings for a render. So let's set some defaults. This will run a lot of times, thousands of times even, maybe. So in this process we will actually set these flags that render uh, flags, the hide render flags, on and off and therefore every time we do this I want to in the beginning have some defaults here so we run through three collections the base collection the tops and the lefts and for every object in there so for object in this collection its objects we set hide render to false and this is actually not necessary at this point. 
So, we are making them visible for the renderer. Now, at this part we have a queue item that is uh, a configuration which has these properties. So, now we can look into the top collection and for every object in there we can hide or uh, unhide the correct object. What is the correct object? It's the one in the queue item. So the first one will have set top to none. And what we do is we run through the whole collection. And if the name is the same as the object name, then we make it visible. So what we do here is we loop through all the objects in the tops collection. So that will be top one, top two and top three and we hide it if the object name is not the name that we give it. So if the name we give it is top one, then we do not hide it. And all the others are not top one, so we hide those. So we can do the same for all the left objects. And we can also do that for faucet, but because we only have one faucet, and it's not in a collection. We can just address the faucet object and its property directly. So we um, set it to be the output of the uh, item we give it, not is faucet, that's its name. So if it's none, then it will be hidden. And we can also do that, of course, for the gauge, but we also have a faucet color. So what do we do with that? Okay, look here. If the uh, item in the queue has faucet not set to none, which means there is a faucet visible, then we set the faucet color. So we address the material in the material library. This faucet has a material, actually two materials, but slot two has the material called faucet. So we address that, put it in a variable. Then we dive into its node tree and from its nodes, we address the principled BSDF. That is this thing. Now in here you'll see the base color and that's red at the moment, but we want to set the color. So from this principled variable, which now is the principled BSDF shader, we address its inputs and from that we address the base color. We set that default value to whatever is in the queue item. And the queue item has a faucet color property and in there is a color property. I'll show you that. This is the list of faucet colors. In there is the object with a color property and a label. And the label is for the file name and the color is for the PSDF shader. Okay, two more things to do. First, change the logo. We do the same trick as with the faucet. We need the to address the material because it has a texture, an image texture. Now, the logo has a material called logo, so we save that in a variable. Then, we address its principal BSDF shader, and I'll show you how it's linked. This is fairly standard. It's just an image texture with a texture map. Uh, we can address that because this is a link which is linked to the base color. Uh, so the principled we already have, then we dive into its inputs, we dive into the base color, 
and then there's a property called links and because there's only one link it's the first item in that list and uh, it's the from node we need because that is actually a uh, that is actually this image node and in here is the file name and we need to change that file name so we put that in a texture called uh, sorry a variable called texture and if this succeeded then we set the image property to um, an image loader that is in the blender python object and we give it the logo path as a file name which we stored in the queue item this will set the image of this texture to the file the image that is in here so now one thing to do that is to change the camera the camera comes to us from the queue item and we store that in camera name why because then we can easily check it in the scene objects if it's there if it's there then set the scene camera to be uh, that camera if not it will report that it cannot find the camera then as a last thing we set the render file path to our output path which we defined up here and then there's just one thing to do and that's render so this is the command with which blender starts rendering so let's render it now to be able to uh, view console messages in blender on macOS we have to run it um, via the console we have to run the executable like this in a terminal window let's do it I'm going to make some room for the um, for the console and we'll see the render window pop up let's start rendering so you'll see we'll have a total of 786 images this is all the possible combinations you can make with just three tops, three lefts, two cameras, a faucet, a gauge, and three colors. That's the power of numbers right there. 768 images. Wow. And you'll see, it'll just go through them one by one, render them out, and render them to these file names so image number 19 is a file for company 3 which has uh, the top none the left is left 2 the faucet is on and it's yellow colored and the gauge is not on and it is the front camera awesome so let's stop it here by pressing escape now it says render cancel and finished which is great and now we can see in the output directory there's a company 3 um, directory created in there lots of files all possible combinations with all possible faucets great it's working so there you have it automated rendering now what you could do is uh, render different layers so for instance this logo plate um, it doesn't have to be part of the configuration if you render that separately and you render all the other objects as uh, shadow catcher or holdouts then you could just render the logo plates as separate layers and the 
depending on how you use it in a web application for instance you can use that as a top layer uh, because all the images have the same size they're transparent you could just lay them on top of each other give you one more tip the um, images that blender rendered are a are fairly uh, big in size uh, you can see that is 605 kilobytes for just one image that is transparent that is a lot that is a lot and I've seen images that are two megabytes in size so there is a awesome program for that that is image optim what we do here is um, default settings are great by the way we can set the um, quality we can compress these images and we can set the quality to whatever you want and the optimization speed we can also set um, I mostly go for normal or the one in between fast and normal because this will take a lot of time I'll show you let's put all the images in here what it'll do it will immediately compress the image and look at that savings most of the time it's more than 95 percent and you will not see the difference almost all images are just the same quality so from 600k to 22k that is a big save and the images are great quality This was my first tutorial. I hope you liked it and you learned something from it. I would love your likes and I hope to see you soon.